15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines full power and lift off. Go single, go USS F-36. Vehicle is pitching down range. MOD chamber pressure is nominal. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. Now, in just a few moments, we'll begin to throttle down those engines on that Stage 1 vehicle that you see on your screen in preparation Falcon for Max Q. Falcon 9 power and telemetry are nominal. Good nominal call out. Uh, max Q is the maximum, the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is a critical moment during flight because the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere. Falcon the, 9 is supersonic. And the ambient static pressure are at its greatest point during this moment. Max Q. And there's that call out for Max Q. Now we have several events coming up in quick succession, and we should hear all of these called out by Mission Control, starting with Main Engine Cutoff, or MECO, Stage Separation, Stage 1 Flip, SES-1, Start of the Boost Backburn, and a bearing, se and bearing Separation. MECO is where we shut down all nine Merlin-1D engines on the first stage. Then Stage Separation is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another. Some great live views there of the first stage vehicle. Stage one flip is when the booster uses its nitrogen gas thrusters to flip the booster around. Now, depending on the mission, Falcon will perform a fast or slow flip. Today, the booster will perform a fast flip because it will be returning back to landing the landing site on land. On ascent, the booster is moving away from the landing zone at one mile every second, so every second counts. The fast flip gets us maximum impact on the forward velocity and allows the booster to orient itself quickly to boost back to the landing zone. Now, second engine start one or SES one is when we will light that MVAC engine on the second stage for its first time. Stage separation confirmed. So we just heard that call out for stage separation and with Stage one, boost back startup. All right, so with boost, the boost back burn, that'll last about 45 seconds. Meanwhile, we should be hearing a call out for fairing separation in just a few moments. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we just heard we had a successful fairing separation. While stage two continues on its journey, the fairing halves will fall back to Earth, where we'll attempt to recover them using our recovery vessel, Doug. Now the boost back burn is almost complete, and it's gonna place the first stage on an optimal trajectory for landing at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at landing zone two. There you can see a view. Stage one boost back shut down. View from the first stage, we heard that call out, but also you can see that those engines have shut down on the first stage vehicle. Now it is nighttime uh, over on the East Coast, so it's a little bit hard to see, but we are still seeing a view from the first stage vehicle. We'll see if we are able to get some clearer views as we hopefully will get some light to shine on the vehicle. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see the grid fins are opening up on the first stage there. And this is a view of our mission control here in Hawthorne. Now it is four minutes into today's mission. The next major milestone coming up is almost at the T plus seven minute mark, and that's where you should see the first stage's entry burn. To start the entry burn, we will relight three M1D engines on the first stage, and that starts with the center engine, known as E9, followed shortly after by a couple of other engines, E1 and E5. Uh, this is similar to pumping the brakes to slowing down the vehicle as it passes back through the Earth's atmosphere. Now, we do this to slow down the, the vehicle due to, to reduce the reentry forces, and that helps us recover and reuse the first stages. 
So during the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but the vehicle is still moving really fast. This causes it to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. And that's why our flight-proven vehicles look the way that they do. The soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little bit more and a little bit more on the outside of the vehicle. We are still a couple of minutes away from beginning that entry burn, and even though we don't have some live views at this moment, you can still check out the telemetry on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And you can also uh, follow along on the right bottom right-hand corner of your screen. You can see a graphic showing the engines on the first stage. So you can see when we do have that entry burn, we're going to light up those engines. You can see that on that graphic there. Now, Falcon 9 is the world's first orbital rocket capable of reflight. And reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical space infrastructure. The Falcon 9's first stage that is supporting today's mission is performing this entry burn for its sixth time. And as we mentioned earlier, one half of the payload fairing is flight proven. One is flying for its second time and the other is flying for its first. And we are, again, just a minute away from the beginning of the entry burn. Again, you can follow along with the telemetry. We are waiting to uh, get some live views back of the first stage vehicle, but we can see the speed and the telemetry. It's nighttime, so it's a little bit dark. We don't have some great views, um, but as there you can see on your screen. Again, it's a little bit dark. We got a little light there, um, but we'll follow along. When the entry burn does come up, it should light up the screen and we should get a little bit clearer view of the first stage. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can see the silhouette of the grid fins. We've got four hypersonic grid fins that help us steer the first stage as it's returning back to Earth. About 20 seconds or so away from that entry burn beginning on the first stage again, this is going to be the second of two burns. And there you can see on your screen, the entry burn has begun. <laughs> and this is a view from a ground tracking uh, camera. And this is a view from the first stage looking aft down at the engines. You can see that entry burn is uh, burning and should be shutting down here shortly. And as you saw on your screen, the engines have shut down on the first stage booster. That completes the second of three burns for the Falcon 9 first stage to make its way back to a land landing today. So in just under a minute, we should be expecting that first stage landing burn. Now the Merlins on the Falcon first stage are optimized for sea level and they achieve 190,000 pounds. 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust that's greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. We are expecting that landing burn any moment. And there it is. You can see the engines have lit up on the Falcon 9 vehicle. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches down. And that was the sixth launch and landing for this first stage. 